According to the World Bank, migrants send an estimated $60 billion back to their homelands in Africa. How can these funds and other initiatives be leveraged towards Africa's overall development? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum, and I'm joined by Angel Cuemo, founder of Believe in Africa. Angel, welcome to the program. Thank you, Robert. $60 billion is a lot of money. One would presume a lot of these individuals that I just mentioned a few moments ago make their money, take a certain portion for themselves for their own living expenses here in America, but they're going to send a good chunk of that money back to their home countries to take care of loved ones, to take care of their communities. That's not a bad thing. Yes or no? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. You know, every African knows where the closest Western Union or monogram is from his house. Sending money for emergency, for health issues, education, for family members that need help. And the real question is also the cost of that transfer. Um, you can look at how much, you know, they have to pay to transfer if you save that money. Sure. I, think, I think it's the highest one in the entire world compared to the transfer in Southeast Asia to the transfer in, in West Africa. It's close to 8%, 10%. If you lower that to 5%, that $8 billion is going, going to the pocket. Even more, of, even more money that's going back to, to, the, to, uh, the to Africa. How do you leverage these type of transactions and, and these relationships that are built or being built uh, when the money goes from here uh, back to Africa in terms of an economic standpoint? Yes, so at the macro level, it's difficult to, to, to quantify, but there's a lot of discussion, including at the World Bank. They try to issue diaspora bonds. People are trying to get the African Union is trying to you know, use you know, the various mechanisms to, to harness the, the, the financial incentive that, that, that could be attached to remittances. But it's ongoing discussion. But you know, the, the foundation, the main point is the fact that those individuals, the diaspora, are linked to the continent. They have a good understanding of the culture of the continent and the, the host country, to be the US or Europe. And that's the foundation for any business transaction. Sure. Speaking of foundation for business transactions, Angel, uh, Africa, the continent itself, has been in the news recently uh, for two reasons. Number one, the President of the United States hosted a African summit where he invited African heads of state here to Washington, D.C. to talk about two big things. Number one, how can we increase trade uh, and private investment uh, in Africa? But secondly, from a health issue, how can we deal with the Ebola crisis? Let's talk about the Ebola crisis first. Uh, I know there's something that you want to address about that. Yes, you know, we are blessed in our generation to see the continent rise. Uh, there's always internal or external forces that are prevented the continent economy to take its place. Now you have colonization, uh, 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 dictatorship, civil war, and now we have the Ebola crisis. So during the summit, everybody understands the continent is rising. They know the, the, the fastest growing economies. But for our generation, it's also the biggest test. So how do we do? What do we do to contain that crisis? Because it's a global issue. It's not just regional. Absolutely. If somebody's dying in Guinea, I'm postborn in Cameroon. It's affecting me. Sure. So and then you can move from Guinea to Cote d'Ivoire to Paris to London and become something we cannot control. And then that means that means the news will be covered by Africa me associated with Ebola, not the economic uh, 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 advantages that sure. the continent is facing. So we have that responsibility. I think it's the biggest challenge of our generation. What we need to do to stop Ebola. We got about 45 seconds left on Joe. Let's talk for a few moments about the African summit that the president hosted here uh, in Washington, D.C. Jobs, 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 and about creating this unique partnership between uh, American companies and African uh, companies. Was that successful, and will it be successful? Yeah, we've been talking about m building mutually beneficial partnership for years, and now that partnership is becoming a reality. During the summit, you saw 200 companies here. We did just didn't talk about bilateral relationship. We talk about public-private sector partnership. We have a very good example. And then we keep in mind that the continent needs to create 54 million jobs by 2020. We need investment. Yeah, that's no doubt about it. We need investment, and Africa definitely needs to see the fruits of those labors fairly soon. Thank you very much for joining us. We really thank appreciate you. it. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.